So bless us before we start Ezekiel chapter 29 here. Lord in heaven, just thank you that you are an amazing God and that nothing happens without you knowing it. You know all the human's thoughts. You see everything, you know everything. And that um if Adam and Eve keeps on their way, they're gonna they're gonna find themselves in the flames itself unless they stop and repent and come to you, Lord, for forgiveness of sins and wickedness. The land has done a lot of wickedness. It's, it's a wicked land we live in, Lord. There's wickedness all around us. And um, only your blood can save a human being, whether it be a he or a she. Does it really matter? Lord, just watch over me and protect me as you have. Give me the words to speak on this channel. As my audience is on this channel, as it grows throughout the months and years, use it for your glory's sake and your kingdom's sake. We don't know when you're going to return, Lord, but I'm thinking in the next five or six years, even seven or eight, it's very close. We only have about eight years to repent here and, um, and um, to, uh, to stop our wickedness and um, to to uh, turn around and follow you, Lord, with the cross where you died for us 2,000 years ago. You're raising up saints of God, saints like me, others across the land, not in just our nation. You're raising us up for this for this cause, Lord, that we speak directly to the people and know that this is not our words but your words Lord in us I pray this in your mighty name Yeshua also known as Jesus Christ of Nazareth born in Bethlehem Amen here we go Ezekiel 29 we're using the King James today. And the tenth year, and the tenth month, and the twelfth day of the month, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him, and against all Egypt. Speak and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I'm against thee. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great dragon, that lieth in the midst of its rivers, which hath said, My river is my own, and I have made it for myself. But I will put hooks in thy jaws, and I will cause the fish of thy rivers to stick on to thy scales. And I will bring thee up out of the midst of thy rivers, and all the fish of thy rivers shall stick Unto thy scales, and I will leave thee thrown into the wilderness. Thee and all the fish of thy rivers, thou shalt fall upon the open fields. Thou shalt not be brought together nor gathered. I have given thee for meat to the beasts of the field, and to the fowls of the he of the heaven, and all the inhabitants of Egypt shall know. That I am the Lord, because they have been a staff of reed to the house of Israel. When they took hold of thee by thy hand, thou didst break and re rend all their shoulder. And when they learn leaned, when they lean upon thee. Thou breakest this and madest this all their loins to be at, at a stand. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will bring a sword upon thee, and cut off man and beast out of thee. And the land of Egypt shall be desolate and waste. And they shall know that I am the Lord, because he hath said, the river is mine, and I have made it. 
Behold, therefore I am against thee and against thy rivers, and I will make the land of Egypt utterly waste and desolate, from the tower of Syene, even on to the border of Ethiopia. No foot of man shall pass through it, nor foot of beast shall pass through it, neither shall it be inhabited forty years. And I will make the land of Egypt desolate, and the midst of the countries that are desolate, and her cities among the cities that are laid waste shall be desolate. Forty years I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations, and I will disperse them through the countries. Thus saith the Lord God, at the end of forty years, I will gather the Egyptians, Egyptians from the people, whether they were scattered. And I will bring again the captivity of Egypt. And I will cause them to return into the land of Patros, into the land of their habitation. And they shall be, they shall be there at a base kingdom. It shall be the beast of the, or the basis of the kingdoms. Neither shall it exalt itself any more above the nations, for I will diminish them that they shall no more rule over the nations. This is a prophecy of any nation that forgets God. It doesn't have to be Patros or, or Egypt. It could be any country. Any country that decides, decides that it's better than the Bible and God, God will bring it down to its knees according to these scriptures. And he is not shy from using the sword as well. We see that when he marched Nebuchadnezzar and his army into Israel. We see God using a Gentile, a non-Jew, taking out Jews that don't believe in him. So don't play with God's word. Don't play with him, period. He don't care if you're even Jewish for that matter. If you piss him off and you forget who he is, Israel got it. They got invaded by Nebuchadnezzar and his army. And it wasn't so, 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 uh, you know, um, kind. They weren't kind to the people. Did you think about it? What if, what if the North Koreans and, or Chinese or, or, or Russians, for that matter, invaded us? Do you think they'd be kind to us? Do you think, do you think that they're, they're, they're going to treat us fair? And kind? No, they're going to stick their ak forty sums in our faces. Because we Americans have the M16, the M4. They're against all that. They're against our ways. They use ak forty sevens in their army. And they're not going to be nice if they were to take over our nation. You see that, you can watch the movie Red Dawn if you don't believe me. That's a good movie, that's a good flick. You know, um, if all of a sudden you, you look up in the sky, there's an invasion of our country. You think God can't make this ha that happen in our nation? We we uh we've killed 60 million babies, and and uh, you think God's gonna let that keep going? You think you you better think again. <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna be a time, man, where he's gonna say enough is enough. I'm gonna march another army into America and invade them and. And um, they're gonna, they're gonna get, they're gonna get it now because they didn't, they didn't yield to my word, you know. Just because America is so, you know, imperialistic with their ways and so big, we have the biggest and baddest military, you know. No one's gonna touch us. Well, you, you better think again. You know who can, t you know, these little countries can't touch you, but God can touch you. You can be touched. Don't think you're untouchable here. Okay, we're not untouchable. None of us are. God could reach over any time and whoop, whoop us any time. He has a big stick. Who really has a big stick? God in heaven does. That's who has a big stick. We think we have a big stick. We think we're it because we got a whole bunch of, you know, um, military industrial complex that protects the nation, you know, um, but it doesn't mean that we're untouchable. If God would allow people to invade his own country, Israel, what makes what makes you think he won't do that to you and you're excluded from that? Anytime he can be like, I had enough, 
I'm gonna go ahead and send a message. I might just use any of any of America to do it, like he did with Neb Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was not a friend of God at first. Okay, he was against Israel. He he allowed Nebuchadnezzar to come in there and wipe out Israel because Israel would never yield to the to the teachings of Yeshua. That's the reason why. And these are God's chosen people. <laughs> you know? Alright, moving on in the scriptures here. It shall be the... Oh, we read that already. We read that, sorry. Well, we didn't finish 15, I don't think. One and a half of it. Holy Spirit, thank you. Um, For I will diminish them that they shall no more rule over the nations. And there shall be no more the the confidence of the house of Israel, which bringeth their iniquity to remembrance, when they shall look after them, but they shall know that I am the Lord God. And it came to pass in the seven and twentieth year. Wow. In the first month, in the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Oh my God. I was just re talking about Nebuchadnezzar. Now we're reading about him. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I told you, man. God is powerful. I, I, I can't believe it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I'm feeling better already. <laughs> and again, let's go back to verse 18 here, man. Son of man, Nebuchadnezzar. King of Babylon caused his army to serve a great service against Tyrus. Every head was bald, made bald. Every shoulder was peeled. Yet he had no wages. Nor his army for Tyrus for the service that he had served against it. Therefore thus saith the Lord God. Behold. I will give the land of Egypt on to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall take her multitude, and take her spoil, and take her prey, and it shall be the wages for his army. I have given him the land of Egypt for, for his labor, wherewith he served against it, because they wrought, they wrought for me, saith the Lord God. Now, rot in the King James is spelled with a W. It's not, it's not R-O-T, T. It's uh, W-R-O-G or yeah, R-U-G-H-T. It's another word for right. They weren't right. That's what that means. Saith the Lord God, and then the verse twenty-one, the last verse for this book of Ezekiel, chapter twenty-nine. And that day I will cause the horn of the, of the house of Israel to, to bud forth, and I will give thee the opening of the mouth and the midst of them. And they shall know that I am the Lord. Now, the thing is, the Holy Spirit's with me. I'm a high-ranking disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm not a prophet, but I can see prophecies here when I read these scriptures all over. <laughs> because I'm anointed by God with the Holy Spirit. That's all I have is the Holy Spirit to assist me here. Uh, besides our Lord in heaven. Um, I can't believe it that I, I was talking about Nebuchadnezzar and all of a sudden we're going to read about him. No such thing as a coincidence. No such thing. There's a reason why God wanted me to emphasis on these verses here for you guys uh, and highlight some of these verses for you guys know that um, we are living in the in the uh, what we call the um, the pre the pre-tribulation period where Christians all over the over the world not just in our nation will be persecuted for their faith will be uh, you know attacked as you know we are attacked in the media demonized, censored, you know, um, muffled, all over. You have, you, you have uh, Christian journalists being muffled, censored, 
I don't want to say no names, but you know, um, you know they they've been uh, they've been shut down, ridiculed, you know some of them defamed, and because they they know that they they're Christians and they were they're the Christian journalists that that are you know doing uh, the real news. They want they rather have fake news than real news. Well, what is example of real news? Example of real news would be that you know um, the uh, the the attacks, suicide bombings in Israel happen on a, on a constant monthly basis. That's not being um, said in in, in these uh, major news organizations. Um, you also have um, you know in in America where we're at. Um, the uh, the murder of infants by by the millions, and they they want to downplay that as well. You know, um, they make it they make it sound you know not so much so no many. It's a conservative number, but really it's more than sixty million. I think sixty million is just a conservative number. It can be it can be in the billions. Who knows? No, not the billions. What am I talking about? There's not even a billion people living in the United States of America. You know, there's only about. 398 million that live here, not you know, close to 400 million people live in the United States of America. But as these, as we murder millions and millions of babies, do you think we're going to have anybody left to raise kids and do anything? I don't think so. I think the rate we're going, we're gonna we're gonna have our own genocide here. That's what's really happening. They want to downplay that. There's a genocide happening right now with babies. It's called infant side. Okay. <laughs> That's the truth. But you know, the average church uh, goer member is like, I don't want to get involved. It sounds so negative. I'm just gonna sit here and listen to the pastor, and and just do church things and sing church songs, and then that's it. That just sounds too negative for me to get involved. Well, thank God I ain't the average Christian. Okay. I pray for the average Christian, though. Because me, I have church almost every day besides Sunday. And, um, you know, what is, what's really happening in our country is the, the, uh, there's a, there's a, a move on the enemy. The enemy is, you know, the fallen one, Lucifer. He is trying to push his agenda here and, uh, trying to cover everybody's eyes to the evil around them that's happening. There's the evil happening here, man. Evil. Beyond evil. Evil everywhere as you look. You can't even, you have to close your eyes not to see this, man. Okay? That's what that's the problem. You guys all of you guys have blindfolds. I'm here to take the blindfold off and 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 look around you what's really happening. You know? Wake up and smell the coffee, man. For me, I drink about three, three or four cups a day of coffee, sometimes five, if I'm really feeling sleepy, you know, I want to wake up here, you know, um, not saying, I know nothing against you tea drinkers, but I just prefer black coffee without nothing, that's the strongest, wakes you up, <laughs> anyhow, um, you know, God is going to use us regardless, if he can make if he can speak through a through a donkey, he can speak through us. He can use anybody. If you're willing, that is. Okay? And I think that, you know, uh, we just have to be in prayer. Deeply in prayer, us Christians. You know, and um, really, 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 really dig into the scriptures and the spiritual realms. This is how we're going to beat this back. If we're, if we're too busy bricking one another, we're not going to have a chance. I'll tell you that right now. There's a lot of Christians right now, a lot of churches are too bu too busy arguing over theology. You know? Theology doesn't really matter if you think about it. What what matters is um can we save a baby from being aborted today as 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 Christians, as members of the church. I think that's what God really cares about. God doesn't care if we're right on theology. We don't have to be right on about our theology. Okay? You you know, I'm not here to argue with another Christian, but yeah, it seems like they're too busy trying to pick something out of my theology to argue about. I got better things to do to argue with you, okay? Um, but uh, you know, I'm gonna leave it up in God's hands. Now, if God says, you know, to 
to to correct something. I'm going to correct something about our theology. Um, for me, I have engaged. I've engaged other other churches besides the Christian churches, as far as you know, their theology is off. So you know, if if another church besides the Church of Christ, yeah, you're off. You're way off. I don't care if you're a Baptist or Presbyterian or Lutheran or or you know whatever. Do you think God cares about any of that? You know, and God wants us to stop bickering on one another. That's the reason why we can't help one another because, well, we help another person that's not saved. We're all saved here. We're all in the same club, even though we're from a different clique, a different, you know. Um, but we all work for the guy on the cross, right? That's that's what it is. If you believe. On the on the death of Jesus Christ, sanctifying his uh, people of their sins, and he rose on the third day, then you believe in the same thing I do. Why are we arguing about theology? You know, I know the thing about Peter and Paul. They didn't always get along either. They're arguing too. They're two apostles of Jesus Christ. Okay? Why don't we stop the arguments about little stuff and get to the nitty gritty of things. I'm going to go ahead and say one more thing before I end this broadcast here. For this Calvary Chapel channel. Uh, no matter what the enemy does, God is able. And he's going to help his saints as long as they you know, are in, in deep communication with him. Uh, you're connected with God, you have nothing to worry about. You, you're, your place... Is already written in history. Your name is already written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You're on the way to a better place. Up there with Him. You ain't got to nothing to worry about. No sweat. Don't even sweat it. Okay? As a matter of fact, you can just, you know, chill and relax. You ain't got to get involved with these, these agendas. You can just sit back. Hey, I'm a Christian. I'm in a little Christian bubble. I don't need... I don't need to, you know, talk about abortions. I don't need to talk about any of that, man. I don't. That's just too. That's just too terrible for me to think about, man. You know, yeah. The average Christian. That's exactly what they're doing. They're in their little Christian bubble, and they're not even like trying to save babies. You know, or you don't have to save babies. You can just say something about it. You know, and maybe we can get a fundraising where we can, we in our churches where we can fund adoptions. That's another way to look at it. You know. We ain't got to put a scalpel in a baby's neck, you know. Where does, that, where does that come from? Well, I think it comes from the pits of hell, if you ask me. It's from Lucifer himself allowing this to happen in our nation. Why are we so asleep? I don't know why we're so asleep. I think, I think it's time to wake up, if you ask me. Alright, man. I'm going to sign off for now. I'm your host, Soshi. Well, this is Calvary Chapel Channel. Until the next one, God bless.